King Israel and the world. Welcome and Shalom. Today is a very special program. I'm going to be taking you to Kiev, Ukraine, where I ministered at what's been described as the largest messianic congregation in the world. And we held an outreach event in Kiev specifically for non-believing Jewish people. God is a heart for Jewish people, and I know that you as my viewers do as well. Ukraine has one of the largest populations of Jews in the world and has a unique history with the Jewish people, which we're going to explore today. Kiev, its largest city, is the seventh most populated city in all of Europe, more populous than Rome and even Paris. Kiev is a relatively prosperous city with a robust economy, and it's one of the oldest cities in Eastern Europe. It has a deep history, which has shaped it into the city it is today. Unfortunately, one of the key moments in Kiev's history was during the Nazi occupation during World War II. This was the location of one of the largest single-day massacres in human history. It took place at a ravine in Kiev, and the name of the ravine is Babi Yar. We were able to visit the place where this happened when I first arrived and was guided by two local Ukrainians who translated for me. Understanding the history of the city connected with me in a powerful way and helped me to minister to the Jews in the area. Babi Yar is a place when uh, more than 33,000 Jewish people were slaughtered in two days in 1941. The Germans came in World War II just began in our territory in Kiev, in Ukraine. Germans, uh, they sent uh, advertisements, they sent posts that all Jewish people should be gathered uh, with their uh, belongings. Uh, and Jewish people, they thought that uh, they will be evacuated somewhere. So they had no idea that they will be killed in two days in a row. This is Rabbi Boris. He's the leader of the Messianic congregation. And he's sharing with us that he grew up not too far from here. And uh, as a young boy, he remembers somebody bringing him here and how the ravine was so much deeper and how you could actually see the walkway that they would lead the Jewish people down before the Nazis shot them and killed them. Jewish people did not understand what happened until last or pre-last moment. Because trees close uh, uh, a real place of shooting. But when they began to take off clothes. It was already the place where they were in hurry. They wake quickly, quickly, quickly. They stood at the edge of this ravine and the Germans simply shoot them. If this is a memorial of what ha happened here. The Jewish community made this in 2006. Uh, you could see the sign here that uh, the voice of the blood of my brother cried uh, to me from the land. And uh, if you will turn, you could see this way. Actually, this was exactly the way how the Jewish people came. Uh, so they are coming here and there was the ravines. And then they uh, take their valuable things and brought them here and shoot it here. There were a few survivors, like 10, who survived. They had to lay under all these corpses uh, for, for hours because Germans, after shooting, Germans came in down the ravine and they kept shooting those who were just wounded, not, not killed. So if if person survived, he had to lay down for hours just to get right time to get out so, so he would not be noticed. This time should never be forgotten because if we will forget it, uh, something like this could happen again. Well, the Jewish people are a marked people and whenever God is doing something in an individual's life or moving forward the kingdom, there's always going to be persecution. And the hatred that the world has shown Jewish people, 
There's no logical explanation for it. They're the most persecuted people historically in the world. And uh, a lot of people have tried to analyze why there's been such animosity towards the Jewish people. And there are a number of different reasons that, that make sense that is accounted for some of the persecution of the Jewish people. But at the end of the day, the reason for the persecution of the Jewish people in such an extreme way is simply because the spirit of darkness hates the spirit of light and God's first covenant people are the Israelites, the Jewish people. Now we read, for example, even in the book of Revelation, that when Yeshua was born, the scripture says, the dragon tried to swallow him up. And then when Yeshua was lifted up to heaven, the scripture says that the devil went after his offspring, his offspring being the church and the Jewish people. So anti-Semitism has always been around and uh, praise God, God is bigger than anything else. And there's much we don't understand, but one thing that we do understand, as Rabbi Boris has just mentioned, is that God is the master of the world and he is working out his purpose. And one day soon, Messiah is gonna cover the earth and we're gonna see the glory of God over every people and land. This experience at Bobby R really weighed heavily on me, but it made the ministry to come even deeper and more significant. As I mentioned earlier, we were in Kiev to minister at one of the largest messianic congregations in the world. And what really blew me away was that a year earlier, God put a word in my heart that I was to preach in the former Soviet Union. And so now, here we were in Kiev, that word was being fulfilled. One of the most outstanding things that we experienced here was the worship at the Kiev Messianic Jewish Congregation. The congregation that we partnered with, Kiev Jewish Messianic Congregation, was the most vibrant Messianic congregation I've ever seen in my life, by far. It was large, you know, several thousand people, but all worshiping in unison and in power. Our uh, congregation is 2,000 uh, people, uh, members. Uh, our services, um, we have a concept of spending Shabbat with God. So our service is long, and for some people it m might seem very long, but we would like to spend that time with the Lord. So we have about two hours of worship and dancing. The Bible said that you have to praise God with your mind, with your body, with everything. That's why we are doing all these dancing. When you praise God with your body, with your uh, dancing, uh, singing, shouting, you are doing mitzvah. You are doing good thing that might bring our Messiah closer to us. I've never seen in any of my exposure to the Jewish world any expression that was more alive than that. It truly made me proud to be part of the movement known as Messianic Judaism. The level of commitment that we observed and the spirit of excellency in all the ministries was just phenomenal. I wish every congregation on earth participated in, in their walk with God in the same way. One of the things that brought me the most joy is when the Word of God was presented, the whole congregation began to shout, warrior shout. Scripture says that the Lord says, I will look to this one, to he that trembles at my word. In other words, to the one that reverences his word. And you know, so oftentimes in church, people are bored, you know. I, I, you know, pastors get rebuked, you know, your sermon was too long. Well, the opposite was true. I mean, when the word of God was brought out, people just began to shout, not just one shout, and not just to do it as an event, 
and not just to do it mechanically, but truly loud, ongoing, spontaneous war shouts to God. I mean, you literally felt as though, you know, they had just received the Ten Commandments from Mount Sinai. I have to tell you, that was probably the greatest messianic worship experience I've ever had in my life. The quality of your dance team, your flag troop, your musicians, it's over the top. To those that love God, After this awesome experience, I then began to share with the people about their union with God. If your goal is to be conformed to the image of Yeshua, and to become one with God through him then you can walk through life with a joyful attitude even when going through difficult times because the promise is that when you belong to Hashem He's using everything in your life to conform you to His image and bring you into union with Him. Will you stand up and give Him a hand this morning? Давайте мы прославим Его. Станем и прославим Его. It's always awesome to be able to, to sow seed into, into fertile ground. You know, when people are hungry, the Word of God runs swiftly. So I think, number one, I was ministering in a place where people were hungry. Number two, I think I brought them a challenging word. And uh, the word that I brought was a word of discipline. We say that this is what we want. Мы говорим, что это то, чего мы хотим. But let me ask a question. Does your lifestyle line up with the fact that your goal in life is union with God? Соответствует ли ваша жизнь тому, что ваша цель в жизни это единство с Господом? Давайте взвесим наши жизни. How many of you, when you wake up in the morning, begin your day by spending a disciplined time alone with God? Кто из вас проводит время вот после того, как встаете, отделенное время с Господом? How many of you will not watch anything on television? Кто из вас не будет смотреть это по телевизору? that offends God. We can't entertain ourselves with the things that nailed Jesus to the cross. If you really are going after God, if unity with Him is really your goal, we've got to get serious about it. Now maybe there's some that are here this afternoon. You're feeling a purifying fire. And God's got a gift for you. I want you to lift your hands with me. Holy Spirit. Holy fire. Holy fire. Come and purify my heart, oh God. The service was very deep. The message you brought carried truth and life. I would like to be more focused on God throughout my day and to be in a constant state of prayer. Receive a gift from the Lord this afternoon for you. He's creating in you a clean heart and renewing Новое сердце, чистое сердце обновляет вашу Beloved, while I'm here in Ukraine, I wanted to make sure to come to this city called Uman. This is a very important city in the Jewish world. In fact, Jewish people from all over the earth flock here by the thousands, especially during the Jewish feast day of Rosh Hashanah or the Feast of Trumpets. 
the reason Jewish people from all over the earth come here during this holy season is because one of their most famous rabbis is buried here. His name is Rabbi Nachman. Rabbi Nachman is the grandson of the founder of Hasidic Judaism known as the Baal Shem Tov. Now Hasidic Judaism is a movement within the ultra-Orthodox Jewish world that began in the 18th century. And what this movement stood for was to bring revelation to the peasant Jews that couldn't even read and write sometimes. They wanted to bring to these common Jews the understanding that, you know what, you may not be able to read and write, you may not be educated, but you can know God simply by clinging to Him, by talking to Him, by being thankful, and by rejoicing before Him. And you know, Jesus Himself comes out of the Jewish world. And there's a lot we can gain by understanding the culture that Jesus came from. And one of the things, beloved, in the Jewish culture is that we should be thankful and we should rejoice. We should cling to God and we should talk to God from our heart. The scripture tells us that we should pray for the peace of Jerusalem and we should love the Jewish people. We stand right now with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in his love for the Jewish people. And we're going to continue to lift up Yeshua to, to the Jewish people throughout the world, letting them know that Jesus truly is the King of the Jews and he's coming back to reign as Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, the Anointed One, and the King of Israel. Beloved, in order to better reach Jewish people, as much as possible, I try to immerse myself in Jewish culture. After visiting many places with rich Jewish history in Ukraine, I was full of anticipation to see how God would move at the outreach event. This outreach was held in partnership with the Kiev Jewish Messianic Congregation, and they had been preparing for this event for months. We specifically made our advertisements and planned the events program to attract non-believing Jewish people. It's really special. Let's check it out. Rabbi Kurt, he has this evangelistic anointing. His and our desire combined. He provided with our team two evangelistic Jewish meetings and hundreds of Jewish people came to these two meetings was Jewish representation of Jewish Messiah in power of Ruach HaKodesh. Some people came from in other cities, people who are not believers. They wanted to hear Rabbi Schneider's message as a person of unique encounter with God. Uh, so they came out of curiosity. Curiosity is uh, very powerful with Jewish character. What a blessing from the Lord to be able to specifically minister to Jewish people. I mean, there's a blessing that comes with that. Even Paul, whenever he went into a city, the first place he would go would be to the synagogue. You know, Jesus came first to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So it's a biblical model. And so I was very thankful and blessed to have an opportunity to do an outreach specifically focused on reaching Jewish people. And so the congregation was asked to invite their unsaved Jewish neighbors, friends, relatives, etc., to this event. And that was the, that was the target. We began the outreach event with a, uh, you know, a, a Jewish worship team. In other words, singing traditional Jewish songs that almost all Jewish people know. So it began that way and uh, got everyone comfortable with the culture of the event. And then I had an opportunity to step forward and share with them my own journey and then eventually challenge them with the message of the kingdom of heaven that Yeshua is indeed the prophesied Jewish Messiah. You're here this afternoon. You want a brand new life. You're ready to leave everything behind you to follow Yeshua. 
I want to ask you to come forward right now. Come quickly. I want to pray for you. Don't wait for somebody else to come. Be bold. Don't care what anybody thinks. You've got to come out from caring what people think. If you feel him drawing you to himself, do not resist him. I am not proclaiming a new religion to you. I'm proclaiming the reality of the Spirit of God. Listen to me. Listen carefully. Now you want to receive God's free gift of life right now? Raise your hands with me. And let's speak to Father God. Father, thank you. That because of what you did for me through Yeshua, I stand before you today. Holy and blameless in love. I ask you now, help me open my heart. Help me open wide. I receive you. God, I receive you. I receive the gift of life. I receive Yeshua. Я принимаю Yeshua. I receive forgiveness. Я принимаю прощение. I receive your spirit. Я принимаю твой дух. Into my heart. В мое сердце. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord Amen. a hand today. It's uh, very important that Rabbi Schneider brought this message because they wanted to hear it, it from Jewish person. Наполовину да. I am half Jewish. I am a Polish Jew. I have Jewish roots through my father. I was seated in the front row and was one of the first people to come forward. His words touched me. They entered my mind and my soul. I personally felt that what he was saying was the truth, and I accepted it. I came forward, and I felt like something was carrying me on their hands. There was a feeling of something around me, and I came forward. I received Yeshua today. I feel Him in me, and I know within me that it was real. When a Jewish person says, I'm going to follow Yeshua, for many of them, they're making a decision to leave everything that's been familiar to them. Just like Abraham, who had to leave the idols and leave that all behind to follow the Lord to a place that he didn't know what it was going to be like. So it's a big, big transition. I love you guys. God bless you. Thank you for letting me minister to you and serve you today. I did the same thing that you're doing today. God bless you. I know that many of you love me and love discovering the Jewish Jesus because you just love Jewish people. I want you to know that we are truly seeing a harvest of Jewish people coming to the knowledge of Yeshua, Jesus as their Messiah, through discovering the Jewish Jesus. Both in Israel, in the Ukraine that you just saw, the people responding, Jewish people that had not yet received Jesus responded to receive him during the time I was ministering there. In the United States, we're seeing Jewish people come to faith through this ministry. And by sowing a love gift, by sowing financially into discovering the Jewish Jesus, you truly, beloved, are playing a part in the harvest. You know, God has a special covenant with the Jewish people still. Paul said that when there's a mass of Jewish people that come to faith, it's going to actually usher in Messiah's return. It's going to be like life from the dead for the entire church. You can play a part in ushering in the return of Jesus by bringing Jewish people to faith. And I want to ask you today, would you just simply open your heart to the Lord? Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. And beloved one, if you feel God's Spirit knocking at the door of your heart, to make a financial contribution, to sow a love gift to him for the spreading of the gospel through this ministry, just simply be obedient to him. As I've always said, there's always a blessing for obedience. Beloved, I want to thank you in advance for your financial support. This is Rabbi Schneider saying today, I love you, God bless you, and shalom.
Here's how you can donate or become a monthly partner. Send your tax-deductible gift to Discovering the Jewish Jesus, P.O. Box 777, Blissfield, Michigan, 49228. Give by credit card at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. Call 1-800-777-7835 or text the keyword rabbi to 45777. To show our appreciation, we'll send you an audio CD and download of Rabbi's Message of the Month and our most recent newsletter. Your gift is bringing salvation, healing, and deliverance to Israel and the world through television, internet, and crusade outreaches. Finally, many of us have been faithful to the Lord with our finances while living. For those of you who like to remember the Lord in your finances when you go to heaven, click Will and Estate Gifts at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. I'm on the Mount of Olives, and I want to close the broadcast today by speaking the blessing that Father God said should be spoken over his people. In the book of Numbers chapter six, the Lord told Moses and Aaron, speak these words over my people and I will place my name upon them and bless them. Yahweh, Yahweh, Ya er Yahweh panavelecha vichunecha Yisa Yahweh panavelecha veasem lecha Shalom. May Father God, Yahweh, the God of Israel, bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord your Father lift you up by his countenance. And Father God is going to continue, his beloved child, to give you his peace. Revelation today for a brighter tomorrow. Find Discovering the Jewish Jesus on all your favorite social media outlets and stay up to date on the content you love. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribe on YouTube. Connecting with Discovering the Jewish Jesus has never been easier. If two of you agree on earth about anything that they may ask, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. Let our prayer team pray for you. Send us your prayer request today by visiting our website or writing to the address on the screen. Our prayer team lifts up every individual request before the Lord. And then, as God answers your prayer request, or if God has touched your life through discovering the Jewish Jesus, send us your testimony. We want to rejoice with you, and your testimony will encourage others. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. 